Okay, we're now on to question two. Remember to start your question on a new page. I'm not going to do that because it's a waste of paper for me because no one is going to mark my paper, right? But for you, please make sure it's on separate pages because different people mark different questions and that is why they ask you to do it that way. Okay, let's read the scenario. It says, Dean Peterson has a clothing account at Markham Clothing Store. At Markham, a customer can choose either a six-month or a 12-month revolving, meaning ongoing, payment option. If you're like at this point, what on earth is going on? Don't stress. Remember what I said is if you don't understand off the get-go, the questions often help. Okay. It says, Annex to A shows Dean's clothing store statement from Markham for a certain period of the year. Okay, remember with these mathlet papers, there's often an annexture, right? So make sure when you first get your paper that you have the annexture, right? So here's the Markham um, account, right? And it says for question 2.1, so we know that we are on the right track. So I've got that. Let's read the first question. It says write down the total balance owing on Dean's account. Now, let's just quickly see here. Okay, so we have this account, right? And there's numerous aspects of it and we need to be able to read this, okay? So there's the opening balance, there's the closing balance. He's had some transactions between there where he's bought. So he made a payment and then he purchased and he returned, he made a payment and he did a number of things, okay? There's some interest. Okay, so let's, let's see what the question's asking us again. It says, write down the total balance owing on Dean's account. So I would say it's this amount here, right? The 4,656 rand and 71, right? Because this is the statement that was sent to him, right? It's basically saying, how much does Dean owe, right? That's how much he owes, right? It's not the opening balance that he owes. This is for the period ending now, and that is how much he, he owes Markham's. Okay, so we're going to say question two, right? Question two, remember to label nicely. Question two. 2.1.1, we're going to say it is 4,656 and 71 cents. That's how much he owes. Okay. Then it says, give the full date on which the current statement is due. Right. So remember, they send statements and then they also give a date on which it's due. So let's look here at the bottom. So it gives a number of pieces of information. Right, but it says, What is my balance? That's how much he owes. And he says, Total is due by the first. Now, you could be thinking, By the first of what? Well, we know that this statement was given on the 15th of Jan 2019. So it means the first of the next month, right? What is the next month? February. So you'd say 1 February 2019. Now, remember, they said it was the full date. So you can't just say first of the next month. Right, you must say 1 Feb 2019. You could also write it like this if you wanted to, but you must state both the month, the day in the month, and the year. Okay, so let's now go on to the next question. It says, State the opening balance of the 12th month revolving account option. Okay, let's go see where's the 12 month revolving amount. Okay, here's the 12 month. Okay. Perfect, right? Um, and it says, what did it say? It said the opening balance. So for me, the opening balance is this amount, right? So what's important here is he actually has both of these accounts, right? He has a sixth month one with this opening balance, but his closing balance was nothing. Where he has the 12 month revolving and he has this closing balance. So the 12 month revolving is still open. The sixth month revolving is actually closed because he doesn't owe anything there. So his opening balance on the 12 month revolving is 1,215 and 36 cents. Okay, so it's very important that you actually understand what they're asking. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Okay, the next question says, write down the price of the item that was returned. Okay, let's go look. So I see a purchase returned here. Okay, but it says the price of the item. So he returned it, and that's how much he got, right? But when he purchased it, it actually cost 4,000 Rand. So it appears that what he returned does not match what he purchased. But look here, there's something that he purchased at that amount there. Okay, so actually we see it does match, right? So be careful that you see how these things work. 
So he bought this thing, don't know what it was, right? At that amount, he was like, mm, it doesn't fit or it's not ideal, and he returned it. This 4,000 Rand he still spent, right? So that 4,000 Rand he still spent and he didn't return anything, but these two transactions match each other. Okay, so be very careful. It makes sense, right? If you buy something and you return it to a store, you get the full value of that thing back unless you damaged it, right? But in this case, he got the full value. So it is 3,000. 3,750 Rand. That was the price of the item that he returned. Okay, very important to see these matching transactions. Okay, it sometimes can be a bit tricky, but you need to just spend a bit of time reading through this. Okay, let's now go into 2.1.5. It says determine the total amount paid using the F&B electronic payments. Okay, let's go find this F&B electronic payments. I'm seeing one over here for the one account, right? So remember he has two accounts. So he had this amount on that account and this amount on that account. So we're gonna add those two amounts together. So the 101.99 and the 698.01, okay? So it's important that you see that these things can play out in a way that actually seems quite complicated. But if you think about it practically, it's actually not too complicated. You just really need to understand what's going on. Okay, um, nine nine. So that was from the six, the six month revolving, right? Six month revolving. Then the twelve month revolving was the six nine eight point zero one, and the total is eight hundred rand. So that's how much he paid using F and B electronic payments. Okay. Importantly, put the rand value because it is a monetary amount. Don't just put eight hundred. It actually means something in this context. Okay, let's now go on to our last question here, right? It says the selling price of an item includes 15% VAT, okay? Calculate the price of the item purchased on 19 December 2018, excluding VAT, okay? Let's see. So, on 19 December, right, what happened was he returned something, right? But he also purchased something, okay? So it said what was purchased. So we're not going to look at this 3,750. We're actually going to look at this 4,000, this transaction here, because it's talking about what he purchased. So we're looking at the 4,000. So the 4,000 includes that, okay? But what does it say? It says calculate the price of the item purchased, excluding that. So we know that 4,000 right, equals the price of the item times by that, okay? So now we want to work out this, right? So we're going to say the price of the item, we know that when we include, when we, um, include that, we times by 1.15 because that equals 15%, okay? So we have that, but now we want the price by itself. You should remember, right, that you can undo this. We want to get rid of something that's times on the side, to do that, we divide it on both sides, right? So we have the price times by 1.15. We divide this side by 1.15. That cancels with that. So our answer is just this. Put that into your calculator, right? We're just going to say 4,000 divided by 1.15. And we say, well, the actual price of this without that was... 3,478 and 26 cents. Now you could be saying, oh shucks, that's very, very complicated. But just think about it, right? We're saying, okay, this is the amount including that. When we include that, we always just times by 1.15, right? Because that's how we, we do that, right? So we expect that the price will be less than this 4,000, right? Because we include that to it to get to the 4,000. So that's why our answer makes sense. But you must always remember reverse operations, right? So the opposite of plus is minus. The opposite of times is divide, okay? So here, it's times on the side. We want to get the price by itself. We divide both sides by the same amount, and we get our price, okay? This you can actually often put into your calculator as well if you have one of those silver um, calculators. But often, a lot of students don't. So you have to kind of know how to manipulate this. I know that it seems tricky, 
right? But actually, it's all right if you just reason it, okay? This is, is a higher level of thinking, right? But it is not super difficult. You must try rationalize it, okay? Your answer should always be less than the amount including that because here, this doesn't include that. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let's go on to 2.2. .2.